Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. Now today's gospel reading from John, the disciples were huddled together in a locked room. And they were afraid of the Jewish authorities. They, the Jewish authorities had, of course, called for the death of Jesus and demanded his crucifixion. Perhaps they'd be next. So fear drove them to hide. The gospel was not being preached. People were not hearing good news about Jesus. The disciples had absolutely no idea what to do next, so they just went and hid in a locked room. Now, thankfully, the fear and the uncertainty of the disciples didn't stop Jesus from coming to them. A locked door couldn't keep him away either. These were easy obstacles for Jesus to remove. He came and he stood among them and he said, Peace be with you. Jesus came and he showed the disciples that even death was not an obstacle that he could not overcome. And he stood there and he showed them the wounds in his hands and the wound in his side. And they were still there, but Jesus was very much alive and well. The fear that the disciples had quickly evaporated, and they were filled with joy. I mean, the Lord is alive, and he rose just as he said on the third day. Jesus told them a second time, peace be with you. Now, that's not just a simple greeting like, hey, how's it going? I mean, the Lord speaks his word to his people. It does what he says. So when Jesus speaks peace to his people, it's a greeting that delivers the gifts of harmony and wholeness and joy. God's word of peace brings restoration to his people. And this peace that Jesus gives through his word, it clears away obstacles of fear and uncertainty. His word strengthens his people and it gets us ready for mission. Jesus said, as the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven. If you withhold forgiveness from anyone, it is withheld. Now way, way back in the Garden of Eden, God formed a man from the dust of the ground and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and Adam became a living creature. And now we see... God in the flesh. Jesus Christ breathed life into his people anew. Jesus breathes spiritual life into them and gives them the gift of the Holy Spirit. And he gives the church the authority to forgive and to retain sins. Now the disciples weren't doing the work of God by sitting there un not knowing what to do in a locked room. So Jesus went to them. He spoke peace to them and he gave them power and the authority to proclaim his word. Now, as you'd expect, the disciples were very excited about seeing this. They were upset because they'd witnessed all the events of the last week, and the Lord had been killed and placed in a sealed tomb, and now here he was, alive, right before their eyes. So when Thomas came, they told him, we've seen the Lord. But Thomas didn't share their enthusiasm. He knew the reality of the facts. He knew the crucifixion. He knew that those cold nails had been pounded through Jesus' hands and feet. He knew that, that spear had been stuck into his side. And he knew that that mangled body had been taken down dead and placed in a tomb. That tomb had been sealed. And if that wasn't enough, Roman guards had been placed there to guard it. Jesus was dead and buried. And that was the end of the story. Unless Jesus comes here and stands right in front of me, I won't believe, Thomas said. Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails and place my finger into the mark of the nails and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Now, Thomas is often referred to as doubting Thomas. That's a bit charitable. The best translation would be, Unbelieving Thomas. I mean, he was very much not believing in the resurrection at the time. And not only did he demand to see Jesus, but he wanted tactile proof as well. He said, quite literally, that he wanted to stick his fingers into the holes 
and thrust his hand into the side of Jesus, and unless it happened, he would never believe. That is pretty sarcastic and pretty skeptical. But this attitude of Thomas, this unbelief, was no obstacle for Jesus. Because he just went ahead and he entered into that locked room and stood before Thomas and said, Come on over, Thomas. Go ahead and stick your fingers into my holes in my hands and shove your hand into my side. And I know the hymn we sang says that he you know, read like Braille the whole. But I wonder, because after seeing that, his response was, My Lord and my God. After the fact, he may have gone over and wondered to examine, but here was Christ, and he was indeed risen. See, Jesus removes every obstacle. He seeks his people out, and he goes to be with them. He speaks peace, and at his voice, fear evaporates, and it turns into joy. And his word can even create faith where there was once doubt, skepticism, even unbelief. Then he goes ahead and he sends his people out to tell others the good news, that he is indeed risen. And one of the frustrations of working together as church is that there are just so many situations that distract us from our mission. And it's pretty easy to get discouraged from spreading the good news about Jesus here as a congregation and certainly in our individual lives. And I'm sure many of you have experienced some level of this over the years, perhaps even in recent times. I mean, there's personality conflicts that come up. There's power struggles that arise. There's changes that need to happen, but then they just seem to drag out forever, or maybe they're not even ever addressed at all. And with all the time and the effort and the money that you give and the time you spend to doing outreach, it can be discouraging when you see results that are less than what you wanted. Sometimes they're very meager. And perhaps the most discouraging thing of all is when your own family and friends refuse to participate, and some of them may even sit there and defiantly go against what Jesus taught. They may confess they don't believe in Jesus Christ. All the while, we feel fairly helpless to do anything about that. And we all, we all have these obstacles in life. We all have these fears and frustrations that confront us. But the good thing is that Jesus knows what they are. And he doesn't just sit around and wait for us to fix everything and make it just right. Jesus comes to us. He removes the obstacles. And just like he entered that locked room and went and confronted Thomas, he enters wherever we gather, and he comes among us, and he takes care of the obstacles in our path. And he was born of the Virgin Mary for that very reason. I mean, if we ever doubt Jesus is willing to overcome obstacles, he actually became a flesh and blood baby so he could dwell among us. He made sure that he came and demonstrated the love that God has for you and for me firsthand in a way that no way we could possibly deny. And he showed it best of all by going to the cross to suffer and to die for us. And to be sure that you hear that love that God has for you into your own ears, our risen Lord gave the church the authority to speak his word of forgiveness. And we're empowered to speak the gospel here in this place, but then you're also empowered when you go out into your daily lives. Whenever the opportunity comes up, you can speak of the hope that's in you. Now, after the resurrection, Jesus could have done anything he wanted. He could have given all kinds of practical advice about how to live our lives, how to be successful businessmen, any form of teaching. But what did he do? He gave the disciples the gift of peace. He gave the disciples the gift of the Holy Spirit. And then he commissioned and empowered them to go out and to proclaim forgiveness in his name. Now, next week's gospel reading from John, Jesus tells Peter, uh, the denier, feed my lambs, feed my sheep. And that's the reason we're here as a church. And it may sound very obvious, 
but it's actually pretty easy to start getting caught up in so many other things of the world that we forget it. We're here to preach and to teach and to speak forgiveness and to show the love of God to as many people as we can. And every single thing we do here, every decision we make, every program we offer should ultimately support that mission. Jesus wants you and me and all the people in our lives and in this community to be cared for and nourished with the Word of God. And there are obstacles in our way as we face this mission. We have obstacles as a church. We have obstacles individually as we go about our day. But Jesus has the power to overcome the obstacles in our life. And he's already gotten rid of the biggest obstacle ever, sin itself. I mean, he went to the cross and he lifted our guilt before God away from us and made us God's children. And he rose from the grave on that Easter morning and he cleared the obstacles of fear and unbelief from the disciples as he entered into their presence and spoke to them peace. And then the Lord sent them out to preach the gospel and they even wrote down his words in Holy Scripture so that you and your friends and your family and the people in this community may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you and your family and your friends and the people in this community may have life in his name. Jesus lives. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Indeed he is. And Thomas saw and heard and touched the risen Lord, and he believed. And blessed are you who have not seen and yet have believed. See, so you're blessed because through our risen Lord, you have peace with God. You're blessed because through our risen Lord, you have the gift of the Holy Spirit. You're blessed because through our risen Lord, Jesus has prepared a place for you in heaven, and you have a glorious future ahead of you, one where fear and discouragement and uncertainty that you have in this life will no longer bother you ever again. Jesus removes every obstacle between you and God, and he comes to you. He speaks his word of peace and forgiveness into your ears today, and then he sends you out as his ambassador to tell the good news to anyone else that you come across with ears to hear. Now the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.